analysis is a set of statistical method of combining quantitative results from multiple studies to produce an overall summary of the empirical knowledge of a given topic. Means that um, if you have in quantitative research, if you have surveys, for example, and you need to do a statistical analysis, you do with SPSS or SAS or MATLAB. Okay, that is the um, statistical method you use for quantitative research. For, sy for systematic review, your quantitative uh, analysis, uh, you can uh, your statistical analysis is actually a meta analysis. Okay, so meta analysis you combine everything. It include calculation of major treatment effect of the individual individual study. So you take these individual study outcomes and then you pool the results as an average. Okay, only if appropriate. So not everything can be uh, not ev uh, all systematic review, not all systematic review can done with that can be can be done as meta analysis. Okay, so the whether to this to pull it as a meta analysis or not, you have to decide. Okay, so why meta analysis? Assess main effect of treatment intervention. Okay, uh, as I said earlier, some study reported significant results, some study uh, reported non significant results. We want to know whether it's a real significant or not real significant. So you pull it uh, to get a main effect. Uh, of a treatment or intervention. And then uh, you want to assess the extent to which effects vary and to explore possible explanation for variation. For example, if you find that a lot of study has a, a lot of variations, so you want to explain through meta analysis why uh, the, the effects are varied. Okay. Uh, and then you'd like to assess the strength of association between variables for correlation, for example, and attitudes and behavior. So you do meta analysis to find uh, this uh, strength of association. So how do you do meta-analysis? So again, there are several steps on meta-analysis. So I hope that you can get frustrated seeing this one. <laughs> okay, first you have to decide whether you want to use fixed effect or random effect size. And then you have to calculate the effect size, whether you want to use odd ratio, risk ratio, or uh, standardized means difference. This calculated effect size must be done with a confidence interval, CI. Okay. And then you calculate the full effect size, which is, uh, this is calculate each study effect size. And then after you calculate each study effect size, you pull it. And then you get the full effect size. And then you check for heterogeneity. And then you do publication bias assessment. You do sensitivity analysis if required. And then you compute. Okay. So what is effect size? The effect size measures strengths and direction of relationship. It covers two types of data. If you have a decretimus data, uh, die, uh, survive or mortality, for example, so you, have, you can use odd ratio or uh, relative risk, sorry, not risk ratio, relative risk. And then if you have a continuous data, like probably FEV1 uh, or HB, uh, uh, hemo, um, sorry, blood pressure or something, you can use uh, means difference. Okay? So ES, like odd ratio, why I, I emphasize that you need to have a control group? Because like odd ratio, you have to compare uh, how many of, of the patients survive in the intervention group, for example. And then how many of the patients survive in the control group. So that's why uh, odd rate, uh, you need a control group. So if the study doesn't have control group, definitely you can't do meta analysis. Okay? ES usually presented with 35% confidence interval. It, the confidence interval shows how precise the parameter estimates. Uh, the 95% of confidence interval in compressed population parameter in 95% of the sample taken. So when the confidence interval cross the null value, which is uh, OR or relative risk of 1, the estimates become non-significant. Smaller CI means greater precision, very precise. Wider CI wider confidence interval, less precise. So smaller sample size usually we <coughs> cause a wider confidence interval. So this is the, um, how it presented in the forest plots. This is the effect size. So each, each study, they will plot an effect size. Okay? We have three study over here, three effect size. And this is the, the diamond shape, is the uh, full effect size, which is, it pull this, this, effect, this study effect size, the three study effect size, and reported is a, as a full effect size. So the, this line is the confidence intervals. Mm -hmm. So the wider the, this line means that the less precise it is. The smaller the confidence interval means the more precise 
uh, it is. So if this uh, confidence interval cross the line of no effects, this is the line of no effect for R or RR of 1. So if it's cross this one, means that there are no significant difference between the treatment or control group. Okay. So it means all these three studies does not have significant difference between the treatment or control group. Okay. So in meta-analysis, we usually plotted for this plot, this plot to summarize or to calculate the uh, effects, full effect size. So how do this box was uh, assigned? If you look at here, the box was not in the same size. We have small box, a big box. So how is this big box uh, calculated? So it used inverse variance. So inverse variance are method to measure precision which is inversely related to the size. So the, the bigger the population in the study, uh, the more weightage it will carry on the uh, full effect size. Small study will carry small uh, effect size. Okay. So it also takes into account uh, like the sample size and also within sample heterogeneity. If the, more, if the study are more heterogeneous, there's a lot of vir 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 variables uh, and different, a lot of uh, report, reporting varieties of different results, so the less that it will be carried in the output effect size. Okay. So, overall effect size is significant if uh, confidence interval does not span the line of no effect, which is one. So, the overall effect size z is significant when t is less than 0 by 0 okay. This is the how do you design the forest plot. So you have the study over here, Nanas, Cardinal, the Park, Frasier, etc. This is all the studies. And then this is the information on the three uh, outcomes, which is how many of us uh, in, the, in the intervention group have success, how many in the control group have success. And this is the you know, total numbers of patients. And then you calculate, this is the weightage, the in inverse variance. And then this is the results of ratio and the confidence interval. So you will be plot in this, this forest plot. You see here, for at all, you see there's a significant difference between the usual care and the uh, intervention, which is favors uh, the intervention is needed. For this one, there's no significant difference, there's no significant difference, this one, no significant difference. This one, also no significance. Uh, this, this one is significant difference. And then it calculates the full effect size, which is the uh, Pool of all the size, uh, this uh, effect size of each study. So it will pull here. If you see Z, Z is the overall effect size. Z is less than 0 0.05. It means that there are significant difference in terms of uh, between intervention and usual care, which is which is favor intervention groups rather than the usual. Okay, this, there's a two main approach in estimating overall effect size. Okay, before you pull this out, there's a two main main things you have to decide. Yeah, one main thing you have to decide, which is to use random effect or fixed fix effects. Okay, um, there are fixed effects or random effects are just based on different assumptions about the nature of the studies and also the definition of combined effect. Fixed effects can be used uh, if two conditions are met, which is uh, if you believe that all the study included in the analysis. Uh, identical or equivalent, same research, same measures, okay, basically are the same. Uh, goal is to compute the common effect size for identified population and not to generalize to other population. Okay, sometimes uh, you can see that they are different in terms of the study design and everything, but you would say that uh, I would really would like to compute the full effect size. But if you compute with, uh, compute the study that with a lot of difference, means that you can't generalize it to other population your generalization only uh, fit into the study that has been included only. So, um, why fix, uh, what's the dif difference between fixed and random effects? Uh, if fixed effects, uh, only something errors uh, uh, occurred with the study variation. So you, you believe that uh, the difference between study A, study B, study C, study B that we included in the study is only something error. Okay, only sample size, only sample area are different. But if you if you use random effect, you believe that the variation of the study does not uh, does not just limit to sampling area, but it includes other other things as well. Okay, 
such as the different population, different age, uh, you know, different uh, duration of uh, follow up, for example. Okay. So if you believe that uh, this study have a lot of variations, they are not similar, not the same, they are not similar. So we use random effect size. Okay. So this is how fixed effect and random effects being calculated. But I don't want to trouble you much by explaining these things, but I just want to show you uh, the fixed effect. It will be just calculated uh, into one. You just consider something uh, 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 error. Only something error will calculate But this one, it, it calculated different error as well, not just something error. Okay? So um, usually, um, it depends on what you want to, to do. If you want to pull, it's okay to pull, but if it's too variety, the studies are too variety, then you say that the generalization cannot be, the generalization of the findings are only to the included studies. Okay? And then you have to, then, to do the heterogeneity test. So heterogeneity test is uh, to test how much variation there are between the studies. You, if the study were homogeneous, means that the studies result only differ by something error. If it's too heterogeneous, means the study results differ by more than something error. There are a lot of variation in the study. For example, the samples are not the same, treatment patterns are not the same. We have a lot of between study variabilities. So you can use Q statistics. If the Q statistics, the statistics is reported as a p-value of less than 0 0.05, it means that there are significant heterogeneity. It means that the study are very different. So you probably don't want to pull the site, pull if, uh, don't want to pull the uh, pull effect size, the summary effect size. Okay. You could you could present the forest plot, but do not pull the diamond. Okay, because it's too heterogeneous. It's uh, it's unfair to pull to pull everything as a as a and give give them a pull effect size. So another useful heterogeneity test is I square. So usually we use I square because I square uh, um, I quad power of two. Sorry, I power of two because it not depends on the numbers of studies like Q test. So usually uh, where this I uh, I power of two located is this one. If you look at here, okay, look at here. This uh, they they will report the heterogeneity test. I, I power of 2, and it reported 65%. So it, it means with the 65%, they are between uh, medium to high heterogeneity. Okay. With the 0%, uh, less than 25%, low heterogeneity means low uh, variables, uh, medium heterogeneity, and more than 75%, they have high, high heterogeneity. You don't want, probably you don't want to pull the uh, summary effect side if the study has high heterogeneity. More than seventy-five. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, if, but let's say when you do the uh, heterogeneity test, you find out that the uh, forest plot, uh, they are very, the results are very heterogeneous. You can show forest plot, like, like what I said just now, without estimate the overall effect size. Do not pull. Okay, or you want to pull the effect size, but you will ignore. Say you ignore the heterogeneity by using fixed model, which is you can't. Of course, you can't generalize into the population. Right? Or you use random effect models, but you will have a wider confidence intervals. Okay? So, suggestion to, uh, to, to if you find a, a, a heterogeneity, there's a heterogeneity in your systematic review, what you need to do, you can do a subgroup analysis. You can divide, you know, probably the studies that we've similar, maybe RCT is one group and then RCT is one group and you do, uh, you do uh, meta-analysis uh, for particular groups, okay? So, um, so this software make my life easier. When you do meta-analysis, you don't need to worry to calculate one by one on your own. There are software that ha can help you with this by SPSS, MathLab and everything. So RefMan is the software, a free software, review manager, free up to one month of trial. After one month, you have to pay. Um, so this uh, software can be used to uh, help you to plot your meta-analysis. So you just, what you need to do is very, very user friendly. You just key in this, your information about the study and then key in the events and then events. 
uh, event from the total in the control group, event in the con events and total population in the experimental group, it will automatically calculate the weights and the risk ratio or odd ratio. You can choose whether you want to calculate odd ratio or risk ratio, and then it is uh, automatically plot like this. So you can get this uh, forest plot, copy it, and then uh, have it in your report. So it's quite easy. Uh, straightforward, I think more easier than SPSS. So, but there are other uh, tools uh, for beta analysis as well, not just recommend, uh, but uh, I just share with you the one that I use. But if you are uh, familiar with other, other software in beta analysis, also you can use that. Not necessarily to be not necessarily to use recommend. All right. Then after that, you have to do publication bias assessment. So the same thing uh, as quality assessment, you do the publication bias assessment. Uh, but in meta analysis, you do publication bias assessment by plotting it through final plot assessment. Okay, final plots. Uh, the x-axis will represent the effect size of the study, while the y-axis uh, is uh, either the sample size or measure of, of the precision of the estimate size, uh, which is standard error. So to do uh, final plot, I mean to do the publication bias through final plot, you have must uh, you must have at least more than eight studies. So the the normal publication, uh, the normal uh, the, the normal plot should be an inverted final. Okay. In absence of publication bias, the distribution of EF will be symmetrical. In absence, means that there's no publication bias, the final plot will be symmetrical. But if in the publication, if there are publication bias, uh, the final plot will be asymmetric. So this is the again, review manager can help you to plot out your final plot. So the plot, and you can see that usually the normal uh, normal plot will be inverted final like that, the cone final, the cone uh, cone looks like a cone and then uh, if you see there's a publication bias uh, you can see that they are missing study over here there's no asymmetry between the between uh, the right and the left or the up and the, to the bottom for example okay like this so if you look at uh, the way that it presented there's no publication bias it looks like uh, it's a symmetry uh, if B you can indicate that they are publication bias but uh, because it's not symmetry but you probably might want to explain Take this out because this is probably an outlier. So if you take this out, the outlier so it become uh, a symmetry. So there's no publication bias anymore. So but this one, you can see that there's a publication bias. Okay, it's asymmetry. The missing study over here probably the you know the study that you found probably reported positive outcomes and with smaller smaller sample size. You look at here, small uh, the bottom the bottom dotted is a smaller sample size. The up Dotted is a uh, higher <coughs> sample size, uh, bigger sample size, and this right is uh, favor the treatment. Significant about this one is uh, disfavor the treatment. So you you know that there are missing studies over here, means there are small study that does not produce uh, significant results. You are missing this uh, B portion. Okay, this is the same as B is the same as C, um, and then in E there's a hollow over here. Uh, so you know that there are significant study are more likely to be, to be published. So you don't have the non-significant study over here. A lot of them are significant. It's either significant favors intervention <coughs> or significant favors control. Okay, so there are probably a, a publication bias over here. So how do you correct publication bias? It's seldom used, but you can use it using a trim and fill methods. How do you use trim, fill and trim methods? So uh, this trim and fill method, they imputed the missing studies over here. You fill circle. This is the imputed. The, the computer calculated for you, and they imputed it in the forest plots. And then uh, you'll see here, okay? You see the uh, pool effect size over here. If the pool effect size was not changed after the computer imputed the missing study, if it, the, it, it wasn't changed, it doesn't not. This doesn't cause significant change. Means this pool effect size are still. You know, overlap with the uh, with the uh, calculated effect uh, full effect size, so it means that uh, it's okay. You can ignore the uh, publication, but it means that it's uh, the study, although it's not in, it's okay. But if the full effect size was uh, different, it means that it becomes non significant now. It becomes significant after. It means that you have there are publication, but you have to find the study, or you can't pull the results. Okay. 
Other than that, um, you use a fire safe end calculation. So this is the formula of fire safe end, fire safe end. Uh, if you have n number of studies, and then you have the effect size, overall effect size, and then you calculate it and using this formula, you, for example, you find out that there are 60 missing studies. X file safe means that there are 60 missing studies in the file drawer. So you, you don't find this. If it's, if it's 60, it's impossible you, for you to find 60 similar studies. You have, you have, you have done a detailed research, you have, you have known that you have exhausted the list, so you can't find 60, that's impossible. So it means that you can ignore the publication bias. But if you find only five study or 10 study, you probably would like to say that there's a publication bias. You can't pull the effect side or you have to find these studies. Okay? All right. So last, before, before thank you, <laughs> the sensitivity analysis. Okay, it's referred to the assessment decision made during the review process. Okay. Um, Sometimes uh, you want to evaluate, you know, you want to pull the, uh, the effect size uh, into its group. It's unfair <coughs> to com combine everything in. For example, you don't want to combine the out reported outcomes on blood pressure, combine it with uh, hemoglobin, for example. They are two different things. So you can do, a uh, sorry, that is a pregnancy, sorry. The sensitive energy, sensitivity analysis, you, you, what you did is you remove the, the study. Look at this one. Okay, so you, for example, you have this 21 study. What you did during sensitivity analysis, you remove one by one. You remove planas, look at the effect size. You remove chabot, put back planas, look at the effect size. From there, the sensitivity analysis, you know which studies actually have pulled the, the effects to significant, for example. So what we did, just, uh, we found that in our study, we found Holland study. Okay, Holland study ha has actually uh, are, the, are the main who actually pull the effect size to be significant, for example, or non-significant. So do you want to elaborate why Holland studies? You want to investigate why Holland studies? Okay, so you need to report sensitivity. By doing a sensitivity analysis, we found that by removing Holland study from the from the research. Uh, it pulled the effect size to this one. So you have to inform the audience that this is happening. So Holland study has carried a lot of impact to the findings of the uh, analysis. Okay. Other than that, um, sometimes uh, you can do sensitivity analysis by uh, category, category, categorizing it into designs, different designs. Uh, such as RCT only, okay, or different study characteristics, you probably want to do, uh, you know, uh, on uh, medication review level 1 only, not level 2, you, you, can, you can divide the groups uh, of the studies into study, its own study characteristics. Okay? Or if, so if you want to drop or, or add some studies, you do the film and film effect, uh, method, you rapidly calculate the mean effect size, as the mean the impact of the studies on overall results. So this is what happened in uh, what I told you just now. When you remove the studies, you will recalculate the effect size. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For for the meta analysis, when you look at it, it's look like so complicated. Yeah, yeah. Right? And then the complicated part, you don't have to think about it because it is the uh, software of the statistics will take care on that. You know? The most important thing in doing uh, meta analysis is what is the outcome measures for each paper? That's what you require. Meaning that the process is more or less similar to uh, systematic review, only that. The paper that you want to go for meta analysis have to have a numbers as their outcome. Usually in RCT, they will report their final things as odd ratio, relative ratio with 95% CI confidence interval. That is the value that we want. And also the N numbers for each group that they are comparing to get that numbers. That's it. Yes, it is just a statistic program. So 
the one that the one that shook is the very basic idea behind the story. <laughs> you know? So it's actually it's not that tricky because we are not interested on the statistic works, you know, no equation, things like that. But what you require is just you require a paper that have uh, usually RCTs. Uh, the important thing is the measured outcome is what. So each paper you are comparing or you take into the meta-analysis have to report the same thing. Meaning, let's say, paper by Dr. Diani also report as odd ratio or on the same disease, on the same things, you know. So odd ratio uh, with confident interval. And then Dr. Shahida doing this more or less similar study but in Japanese patient, still odd ratio with confident interval. That's what we require. Not clinical research? No. For for the meta analysis is quite difficult. I don't think uh, you can do that for non clinical. Uh, I'm sharing I'm sharing some papers, systematic review done in chemistry and systematic review of pharmaceutical properties of origin sites lineage. This is examples of uh, other fields. I'm, I'm, yeah, I haven't done systematic review in other fields other than pharmacy practice or clinical. So, but I think since these people is available, it means that it's doable in other practice as well. Chemistry. So I'll, I'll show you. So this, uh, just want to show you that you can use or make a medline to use or to do for your search. Kalau you tak tahu nak buat search macam mana, you can go to ask librarian on how to do the uh, search. So you need to combine N and O. This one is need to be practiced. Lah. You, simply, you need to ask a librarian to help you out. Thank you. So, so systematic review can be applied to anybody. But meta-analysis is, at this moment, I memang to uh, practice lah. But they require outcome measures you know, to compare together. Lah. Actually, usually people will have to have both ratio or relative ratio. The mean difference also is seldom used. It's quite difficult to plot in forest uh, plot. Okay? Right. Uh, so, uh, yeah, questions? No. Uh, SPSS tak ada that. No, SPSS is talking about raw data. Raw data that you analyze. This one is not raw data. It's the results that you combine. So you talk about what? Uh, uh, because the code ratio, you get it from raw data. But you need the inverse variance. The inverse variance method you need to use a random manager. Because you calculate your sample size, study, and you have to use it. Okay.
you have a clear protocol how to do the search, you have a very standardized uh, what you call it keywords. That is part of a system method because system method is doing at a different different level. Uh. Quality assessment. Yeah. Quality assessment. But, but, but macam ya ini, ya ini tak compete dengan uh, PICO lah. Uh. Uh, ini tak PICO lah. Ini tak compete. Ada uh, PICO je lah. Uh, ada PICO je lah. The best is PICO lah. Obviously. Tapi tak dapat PICO pun tak apa. Uh. Okay. So, thank you very much untuk semua. Tapi nak cuba stay sekejap sebab I nak bagi briefing about our database. Student, thank you so much. Come again next time. Hopefully you learn something and produce two papers this year. <laughs>
Lepas tu Google yang ini silam buat tu this one share terus kan tak maksudnya kalau you edit semua nampak kan yes. ha. so total perempuan I berharap jangan buat apa-apa dengan yang telah diadakan tu maksudnya mm-hmm. jangan kata-kata batal dan ke delete lah what every you study you mm-hmm. kalau you nak you cut and paste buat kat you punya sendiri jangan mm-hmm. buat drive ni sebab drive ni di share kepada semua orang kalau akan ada journal baru yang you rasa sesuai you boleh update bila you tambah je semua boleh nampak dia tambah semua boleh nampak So jangan jilid, tambah boleh? Ah, janganlah jilid <laughs> Tak, saya takut ibu tak suka kan Katakan you buka QM, you tap QM, you buang tu Kita orang hilang semua Tak tahu apa Selain dia boleh tambah Contoh nak update kan Macam contoh ada salah satu jenis kan Perasaan dah remove from scopus Tapi update kat situ ke Ataupun kena bagi betul-betul pusat Aku tak syedah dia yang update Sebab dia betul-betul Haa, bagi tahu betul lah Pusat untuk update betul-betul Tapi, tak tak, saya rasa Haa, yelah Haa, yelah Betul, update Kak, kalau nak buang, bagi tahu Syedah lah Ketua Abdi Haa, okey Tak, kalau menambah pun tak banyak Dia akan pergi satu, dua, sikit sekala je Perhari-hari, tak akan nambah pun Kan, ketua pun ada lagi Kita-kita lain, menjaga anak dan sebagainya Kan, I consider, I consider Okay, so itu Lepas tu, the next one ah, Yang ini yang I perlukan uh, Semua orang kena buat sendiri Okay, iaitu Database penerbitan masing-masing So kalau you tengok dekat database ni kita ada database keseluruhan 2016 kemudian kat tab-tab bawah tu setiap tab tu ada nama masing-masing tau kita ambil contoh nama I lah katakan ok dulu eh ha, macam tu so you kena update status of the paper tu lah apa yang untuk tahun ni lah tiap-tiap bulan tu you kena update apa status maksudnya lepas tu April tu masuk lah so yang dah publish tu ke dah acceptor tu dah almost tamat lah kan Dari tunggu yang acceptor tu tunggu nak publish je So yang revision tu next month apa dia jadi Adakah masih revision ke Sampai ke hujung ke jangan masih revision tak habis Ke atau dah tukar status So yang ini yang ini kita boleh nampak Boleh? Kan? Ha, bila you edit tu semua boleh nampak Update ke buka tentu tu Sebab tentu dah sini Ayu boleh tukar sendiri Atau Tak 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 Yang baru You boleh tambah yang baru Kalau you nak tukar Kat situ pun You boleh tukar sendiri Yang penting Yang penting Yang penting Sebab yang penting Out my side Ialah ini untuk memantau Bahawa memastikan Semua orang Sedang menjalankan penulisan You know Itu yang lebih penting Kalau dia stuck Kalau lama kita akan tanya sudah di accepted tapi dia tidak diterbitkan 2018 masa tak? Dia tidak accepted lah Macam tu je lah macam MP tu Tak tak? Accepted tapi pagi setelah 2020 ke Tak payah nak mati pun tak tahu Accepted je saya pun tak tahu Sebab publication tu pun I email, email, email Sebab kena bayar kan? I email dah sebulan dah macam mana nak bayar tapi tak ada Tak tak respon pun dia tak kisah pun bayar tak bayar pun Duit pun tak jadi penting dengan orang dah. Saya pun tak tahu apa duit. Ya. Ah, yang ini saya pentingkan jenol. Ah, sebab yang ini yang akan dikira dalam Myra. Sebab benda-benda lain tu impact besar tu ponis lah. Kecil sangat. Bifas atau bifas? Apa? Bifas atau bifas? Eh, ah, yang ni ah, A5 dengan B5 ni Kalau ingat ah, Sebelum-sebelum ni punya bengkel kan Saya letakkan laptop Ada A, ada B kan okay, ah, Masa tu kan you all ah, Buat kat sini Yang warna-warna kuning ni Yang you pernah buat lah dulu ah, So kalau macam nak copy paste Boleh copy paste kat sini Masukkan lah dekat nama masing-masing Sebab mungkin ada So you tengok lah You punya dokumen tu Mungkin asal ya 2016 Mungkin ada paper yang belum dipublishkan lagi Mungkin berada kat A file atau B file You check your name Kat mana you berada 
kuning tu lah yang merah ni. Ah, so nanti kalau you nak penuhkan you punya tu, kalau ada paper yang masih dalam penulisan tak tak habis dari 2016 tu, you boleh cut and paste je lah title tu. Okay. Lepas tu bila you kata macam accepted ke, publish ke, send tu, uh, Rushida akan email you nak bukti. Ya, yeah. uh, setiap kali dia tukar status, kalau revision tu tak boleh nak bukti lah. Tapi kalau dia kata dia submit tu, kita nak bukti. Dan we hope kita ada empat pembuktian lah setahun. Sebab empat submission kan? Ya. Yeah. Ya, ya betul. Ini semua kita sebagai uh, corresponding atau first author. Ha? I do one of you lah. One adalah you lah. Kau tak ikut dalam kita. Sebab tu, sebab dia base wider tu dah. So, dia corresponding. I thought dia corresponding. Tak apa. Kalau di luar, you boleh update. Kalau di luar, you boleh update. Sebagai you punya. You boleh clean sebagai you punya Fakulti lain tak boleh Tak boleh Tak boleh Sebab kalau fakulti lain nanti besok dekat sini kosong je you punya Semua paper tu pergi kat fakulti lain Kalau dia koresponding Ah, ha, mesti yang Farmasi punya, you berada kat farmasi Kos, Kalau Kalau koresponding dengan first auto orang dalam ni Salah seorang dia boleh clean Tak boleh claim Sebab selagi dia dalam UKM Susah Kalau UKM Kalau dalam UKM Korresponding saja Kalau dalam UKM Korresponding Tak boleh Tak boleh Korresponding lain Betul-betul I think kalau dalam UKM mesti corresponding lah Kan? Sebab first auto pun tak boleh kalau dalam UKM Sebab orang yang korespon tu akan claim Yalah Bukanlah maksudnya dia pergi kat fakulti dia Bukan kat kita For the paper So kalau tak nanti dua paper dulu Katakan you join ni FSK FSK corresponding Dekat dia buat paper, kat kita buat paper Tapi bila sampai kat bahagian satu je Dan dia akan nama FSK Tapi dalam kira-kira ni kalau orang FSK dia dah letakkan Dia will count as SPV SPV akan kira Cuma yang kata-kata Tak betul Masuk kontak sepuluh empat Kalau macam tu lah Yelah Yelah sepatutnya Tapi I think kita kita Sepatutnya setiap pencara tu Actually wajib ada Empat For you Per pencara You know Kalau kalau istilah empat per pencara Meaning it memang tak boleh share Tak boleh share Tapi you kena pecah Kalau paper tu ada empat kata macam ni kan You pakai satu paper Ada empat fakulti You hanya kosong poin dua lima je Bukan satu Bukan Kosong poin dua lima Ya Kalau dia kata empat tu Maksud you hanya dapat kosong poin dua lima je Daripada empat poin tu Memang macam tu Tapi kalau dia share dengan Dua lain Tak apa Dia kira satu-satu Dia satu-satu Sebab dia kira universiti Sebab pembahagian tu per, per uh, Pencara universiti Memang macam tu Sepatutnya lah dia kira dia Okay So kalau tak dapat apa lagi So I hope uh, benda ni dah berada dalam email masing-masing Siapa yang tak dapat email tu Maklum kepada Syedah uh, Lepas tu dekat Google Drive ni dah ada lah So siapa yang tak ada account Google Please make sure you buka your, your account Google Kan? Ha? I tak tahu lah ada yang masih tak ada ke apa Ha? Ha, ya, 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 ya,
saja yang uh, kita nak share pagi ni kan Okay, so untuk menutup majlis uh, kita berterima kasih kepada mana penonton penyimpanan. Kenapa? Kenapa kita? Awak awak untuk diri dalam. Thank you sebab memberi uh, perkhidmatan. Uh, memang I think setiap kali kalau kita nak uh, nak minta pencara kita berkongsi tu jantung kita jatuh ke lantai sekejap lah. You know. Uh, tapi sebut hari ini. Tak, 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 t